Hello friends, let us start with our fifth chapter, Non-Traditional Machining. This is also known as Unconventional Machining. So, before going in the detailed processes of this Non-Traditional Machining, let us understood what are the limitations of our conventional or traditional machining processes okay so when you talk about the tool tool material it should be 30 to 50 percent harder than the workpiece material but sometimes what happen if workpiece itself is very hard and there is no tool which is harder than the workpiece now there is a question mark which material used as a tool material okay or sometimes the material has a very poor machinability that you will not get a proper machining on the workpiece with the conventional machining processes then also you will find the limitations of our traditional machining suppose you are interested to make a very small holes say less than 0.1 millimeter in diameter then also the conventional machining processes cannot do that again complex shapes automations then machining of highly brittle materials say for example i want to drill a glass then it is not possible with the conventional machining processes okay then if I want to machine a complex concave curvatures then also it is not possible by the conventional machining processes. So therefore we require something new machining processes or non-traditional machining processes to do these jobs and which are these processes so see here we are having these basic unconventional machining uh, machining methods these are ultrasonic machining abrasive jet machining electrochemical machining chemical machining laser beam machining plasma arc machining then electron beam machining right we will see it one by one so in this video we are going to understand about USM that is ultrasonic machining okay so see here the schematics of this ultrasonic machining here so here is the abrasive slurry tank this is a fixture on which the workpiece is mounted and this is the tool given with the feed force right and it is vibrating the tool is vibrating and also feed with the feed force and you can see the gap between this tool and workpiece in this gap we are applying the abrasive slurry okay so these are the transdu transducers to have these vibrations of the tool so this is the simple uh, schematics of the ultrasonic machining let us see how the material actually removed in this process ultrasonic machining okay you can draw this diagram let us see the schematics view of material removal so see here this is the tool or which is also known as horn this is our workpiece okay this is the tip of the tool and see here this gap between the tip of the tool and workpiece in that gap we are providing this abrasive slurry and as I told you the tool is vibrating with ultrasonic vibrations commonly the frequency is around 20 kilohertz and the amplitude is ranging from 50 to 20 microns and at the same time tool is given a constant feed force see here okay 
so from one direction we are applying this abrasive slurry between the gap and we can have the dislocated chip or removed material at one side okay so see the basic process of this ultrasonic machining involves the tool which is actually made up of the tough and ductile material is continuously vibrating with very high frequency see this is vibrating very high frequency and the continuous slurry of abrasive right is fed in the small gap between tool and workpiece and at the same time tool is fed with the feed force f so what happened this hard abrasive grains so these are the spots are the abrasive grains fractures the hard and brittle work surface resulting in the removal of work material in the form of small particles okay and the tool material which is tough and ductile wears out with a very slow wear rate so uh, students one thing we have to keep it in mind when we are learning about this non traditional machining processes that is wear ratio okay wear ratio is what so actually how much material remover we are obtaining on the workpiece divided by how much wear occur on your tool material simply it is a ratio of volume of material removed divided by the volume of tool worn out this is a wear ratio and each process we are try to understand this wear ratio okay so here if this is the work removed from the, or material removed from the workpiece and this is a tool worn out see here then the ratio is known as the tool wear okay uh, it is wear ratio actually right so this is the schematics view of material removal and i already described how it is taking place if you want to see the mechanics of ultrasonic machining so what is happening there we can describe the mechanics of ultrasonic machining in the following way number 1 the hammering of abrasive particles on the work surface by the tool right abrasives are having impact on the uh, workpiece by the tool then this impact of free abrasive particles on the work surface okay after hammering of abrasive particles on the work surface they are causing the impact of the free abrasive particles on the work surface and finally the erosion due to the cavitation we can uh, describe the mechanics by writing these three points now if you want to find out the volume of work material removal or removed we can write it as q is proportional to the this capital v into z into nu where v is what the volume of work material removed or volume of material dislocated per impact z are the number of abrasive particles making impact per unit of cycle and nu is the frequency okay so q is proportional to the v into z into nu so these are the things here i mentioned now if you look at the diagram the first diagram i show you so on the top of that diagram there was a transducer okay see here so this is a transducer so what is actually function of this transducer so transducer in the ultrasonic machining which will convert the electrical energy into the vibration or vibratory motion of this 
tool by using this the magnet restrictive principle or the piezoelectric principles so here what is magnet restrictive uh, transducers and piezoelectric transducer we will uh, see in short okay so actually the magnet restrictive transducer which are generally made of the perma alloys the composition of perma alloy is what 45% nickel and 55% of iron when they are exposed to a strong magnetic field they are going to change their length okay and when they are changing the length we will get this the feel of vibration okay and if we talk about this electrical uh, piezoelectric transducers what they are doing when the electrical current applied to this piezoelectric materials like quartz or lead zirconate titanate they will increase in the size and when the current is returned or when the current is removed they will return to its original size or nominal size so this is how they are changing their length and that will give us effect of vibration of the tool okay then look at this tool horn or this is also known as horn simply tool cone or the horn so these are also known as the concentrators these are also known as the concentrators these are the various types of concentrators so what they are doing actually this tool cone or horn they are amplifying the mechanical energy produced by the transducers so horns mechanically amplifies the vibratory energy to give the required force to amplitude ratio understood what this tool cone is actually doing it will amplify the mechanical energy which is produced by the transducer and we will get the required force to amplitude ratio okay we can attach these uh, various types of concentrators to the uh, tool tip okay by means of screwing or we can brace it okay here written the tool tip attached to the cone by means of silver brazing or by screwing so see his, this is the exponential concentrator this is the conical and this is the stepped these are the types of concentrators we can use at the tip of the tool okay then if you talk about the abrasive slurry so typical abrasives which are used in the USM are aluminum oxide silicon carbide or the boron carbide but here see aluminum oxide wears fast and it good for glass and ceramic whereas boron carbide is popularly used abrasive which is harder than the silicon carbide but which is costly than silicon carbide okay sometimes we can also use the diamond dust for getting the good accuracy and surface finish also the cutting rate okay now the fluid if we talk about the fluid in the abrasive slurry so the most commonly used fluid in the abrasive slurry is water okay water is most commonly used fluid in the abrasive slurry but other than fluid we can use the benzene glycerol or the oils we can use in the abrasive slurry if you look this graph the viscosity of this slurry versus the material removal rate you see when the viscosity this uh, slurry in goes on increasing the mrr goes on decreasing okay so this is the thing about viscosity of slurry so viscosity goes on increasing you can see that the mrr is going to decrease now let us talk about the tool material in this usm as 
there are impact loads are acting on the abrasive particles so newton's third law with that equal and opposite reaction force will produce by the abrasives onto the tool material or onto the tool simply so there are having chances of the brittle fracture of tool material also isn't it so as it is removing the material and abrasives are again causing the impact on the tool material according to third law of newton then there will be definitely the fracture will take place on the tool material also so hence wear of the tool is going to happen okay so that is the reason why we are not interested to use the hard tool material here that's why we are using the tough and ductile or soft material tool material and which are commonly used in the usmr the copper brass mild steel etc okay let us see the advantages of usm of course these are used for machining of very hard and brittle materials and the very famous example of this usm is machining of or drilling of the glass or ceramics okay so next advantage what it is not affected by electrical or chemical characteristic of workpiece we can produce a hole of any shape okay it has high speed moving parts therefore working is not hazardous no high speed moving part is are involved in this uh, equipment or in this machining process that's why it is not hazardous it is safe okay now what are the limitations of ultrasonic machining so of course the low mrr is there compared to the other machining processes unconventional machining processes usm is having uh, low mrr then the depth of hole produced are the limited okay the tool wear is high as tool wear is high sharp and sharp corners are not able to produce flat surfaces cannot be produced at the bottom of the cavity due to the ineffective slurry distribution okay we cannot go at the bottom to produce as flat surfaces as there is any one distribution of this slurry so these are the things about the ultrasonic machining okay so we will discuss the next process in the next video thank you